break again. To test the machine, I want to put it into a high speed spin. Just press the power button, then go to speed over here, high speed, and go right into the play button. And as you can see here, it's just doing that shifting back and forth. And then sure enough, that LE error code comes right up. To be safe, always turn the water off and unplug the machine before you start working on it. Next, we have to remove the panel from the back of the machine by unscrewing these four Phillips head screws. In my case, I didn't have to unplug the water hoses or the drain hose because they were long enough where I could turn the machine sideways and work on it. I had plenty of room. But in your case, you may want to unhook the water hoses and take the drain hose out. Removing the back panel and putting it aside, we're gonna expose the rotor. You can see the rotor here. We need to remove this nut in the center. It's a seven, 17 millimeter. Get your ratchet and twist it hard to the left. Now I'm using a screwdriver here to hold it in place. When you, if you're gonna do that, make sure you do not touch the copper coils in the middle, but you need to hold that rotor in place while you turn it and get torque on it. Here's the nut, put it aside. Get a firm grip on the rotor on both sides and pull it straight out. It's gonna have some resistance because it's magnetized, but it'll come off. Get a good look on the center splines and make sure they're not stripped out. This one is perfect. Next, remove these six bolts holding the stator on. I think it's a 10 millimeter, I'm not sure. You're gonna have to check. Use an extender on your ratchet, helps getting into space. And remove them all, but leave one on top for the next stage. I didn't do that here, I removed them all, but we wanna remove all three of these wire harness screws holding these in. It makes it easier to pull the stator off when you need to pull it off because the wires are a little bit looser. And look, now you can see, he, he, there's the hall sensor. Unhook both these wire harnesses so you can get at that hall center and just pop it right off. Use a flathead screwdriver and your thumb to pop this off. Okay, now here's the new hall sensor here. Okay, it only fits on one way. And so you're gonna pop it in the place. You wanna hear an audible click. Next, reconnect both wire harness. Now realign the stator in the same position you found it and tighten all six bolts back in by hand first before ratcheting them down. When ratcheting these bolts into place, get them really snug and tight because this machine moves and shakes around a lot. Now it's time to put back in those three screws that hold the wires tight to the machine. You know, this machine moves around a lot, so you don't want loose wires. Make sure you put all three of those screws back in. When putting the rotor back in place, make sure the spines are aligned. Because it's magnetized, it's gonna wanna suck it on, so you might have to realign it a couple times so it gets right on the center. Make sure the center spindle is flush with the center of the rotor. In this case, I used the back edge of my screwdriver to tap it into place until it was flush. Put that center bolt back in place with your 17 millimeter ratchet. If you're gonna use a screwdriver to hold that rotor in place while you ratchet down on it, make sure you come nowhere near those copper coils. They're fragile. Really drive that ratchet home. You want this super tight on there. Put the back plate on and put all four screws in the holes. If you found this content useful, please give a thumbs up, share, uh, subscribe, all that jazz, but stay tuned to the end because it's really satisfying to watch this thing spin after all that work. To test the machine, just turn the power button on, go to the spin select, Put it on high speed spin, then just press power and watch it roll. The link for the hall sensor part is in the description down below. Just click it, it takes you right to Amazon. Stay tuned to the end for that tip. Okay, you are spinning.
to do a full high speed spin. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you're very sweet. Okay, you made it to the end of the video, and here's that tip I promised you. Now, usually you're going to get that hall sensor. There's a couple other things that could go wrong with an LE error code, um, and they all happen for usually from overloading your washer. Okay, you don't want to overload that washer. Um, don't put too many towels in at once. Don't. I mean, my wife does the same thing. A lot of customers do this. They're constantly overloading it. Uh, and it's not always the best advice because it breaks your machine. And then those machines cost a lot of money and you got to call a guy like me and we cost a lot of money too. So don't overload the machine and likely that you'll get longer life out of that machine and you won't get that LE error code. Okay, get out and get some people. It's a beautiful day.